Welcome back to session one, part three of our conversation with Corbin and yourself on how to help you cross the bridge from childhood and school and university into the world of work using what we have called work speak and being far more conscious about the way other people perceive you because you own that challenge and what we're doing here is helping you develop the skills and provide you with the concepts of how you are going to achieve a situation where people appreciate your full potential and are far more likely to give you a job and advance you forward in work, along with you deciding what you really want from life. What is your purpose and what are your immediate needs and wants? So that's why I was happy with the word that I brought in to, uh, harness. to harness your potential. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, you see, there is a difference between need and want, isn't there? Yeah. I think another want may, because I've, I wrote a few down. Um, we'll I come think, back to those. Okay, okay. Have you scanned over those? No. Okay. Well, I think they they apply to what you're asking. Oh, okay. I'd, I'd yeah. say um. Well, for, to help other people watching this, what yes. did I ask you before that? Now, before we started the session, I asked you to do something. What was that? To write down what I wanted to get from this session. Okay. So I've asked a question already. How long ago? Yesterday. Okay, all right. So you've had time to think about it. Had time to think about it. What did you do after I asked you the question? Did you just jot things down straight away or did you do something else? No, I thought about it and then I jotted them down this morning before I drove out. Okay. And uh, nothing in between in, in terms um, of any kind of research you did? Or, oh, I, uh, I read up on... The sales technique spin. I looked at the I looked at the soft sales techniques, which you also mentioned to me yesterday. Okay, so I asked I'll you two that. questions then. Well, one request and one question, which was to to read up about spin and soft sales techniques. And I suppose there were two questions because you asked me where I was in my life at the moment and what I wanted to get from today. Okay. So, hey guys, on a coffee well, table. Yeah. yeah, I'd love one, darling. It's um, no, co little... coffee would be great. Yeah, no. Do you want a coffee? I'm all right, thanks. Cool. Okay. You like one? Yes, please. <coughs> Edit it out. Well, you yeah. can or, or yeah. you can or you can't. You don't have to. Let me just check that the mic's on. Hey, it's still going. Um, can, can I just, again, coming into the words and the specifics of words. So when we were talking yesterday, I mentioned spin. And basically the, the way I tried to pitch it was I, I asked you what your wants were, but I also mentioned spin, all right? Now spin is a selling technique but I think we can apply a lot of what people normally think as selling methods to take those and shift them across into sort of ordinary life because there's, we have no reason to believe you want to be a salesperson. I wouldn't push mm. you down that path or I wouldn't say don't be a salesperson, but on the other hand, we're, we're not talking about selling, okay? People in the world of work use thousands of special words that you won't have come across in your normal school and even universe. And spin, which is situation, problem, implication, need, is one of the most common. It was invented, if you think that's a good word, 30 years ago, um, and it's still in common use today, especially in the world of selling. But what I'm trying to do here is apply it to the fact that people including Corbyn and yourself potentially, are in a particular situation that may give you a problem. There may be implications because of that problem and those may result in you having a particular need or several needs. So it's quite useful in that respect 
And I wanted to encourage Corbyn to start engaging with this whole business of work speak and hearing the language of work. Okay. So what I did was I actually made a suggestion rather than ask a question. Yes. Or a recommendation. Yeah. Okay. So there's again coming into it, there's the difference between a suggestion and a recommendation. So we can come into all the preciseness of these things. But so when I ask questions, I'm afraid because of all my experiences mm -hmm. with selling and everything, they, they always are very specific and directed. And the words I use are meant, they have a purpose. Okay. So I suggested you looked into spin selling and I asked you to think about what you, what you wanted. Yes. Okay, so... At this point, I want to understand better what goes on in Corbyn's mind between having a thought and taking an action. In this case, I suggested he did something, and I'm curious to know at what point he actually took an action on that request. That gap between thinking something or being our something and actually doing it in the IPL, we call it Thaction. That's T-H-A-C-T-I-O-N. It's how long does it take a person typically to act on a particular type of request? And it's a vital skill area to work on because learning to take the right action at the appropriate time is going to help you optimise your behaviour. It's not taught and it can be optimised. It covers all sorts of subjects like prioritisation and so on. It's very, very important in business to manage what you do and when you do it. I asked you what you wanted. You said you'd had an opportunity to think about it already. Yes. You said you jotted some things down. Yes. In the car on the way here? or just... No, at home. I can't. When I woke up. Great. I think when one wakes up, it's a great time to jot down what your thinking is. Mm. Because th there's particular reasons to do with your conscious and subconscious mind that make that a very, very good time to write down a few thoughts. Mm. So go for it. Um, well, I thought that I wanted to know maybe how to improve public speaking skills. I thought this might give me confidence to, well, like you say, you, you mean exactly what you say. So I think that would, I'm not looking to be a public speaker of any form, but I think if I'm confident in what I'm saying, yeah, maybe maybe just I would like to be more confident in conversation, to, to drive a conversation to where I want to go with, okay. with the confidence. So confident in conversations is is different to public speaking, isn't it? Yes. What's the difference? Well, if you're confident in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, you can tend to channel the conversation to get what you want, I suppose. Whereas if you're confident in public speaking, it just means that you're not going to be making a fool of yourself in front of an audience of people. You can see, just by looking at Corbyn's hunched up body posture and his suppressed voice, that there's a lot we can do to help him improve what's called his presence and his projection. And you may find it helpful to video yourself and just see how well, when you're talking to another person, how well you project and how strong is your presence? Are you the sort of person that others will trust just by looking at you and be persuaded by you? Or are you projecting in a way that makes people uncertain about what you're saying and less inclined to listen to you carefully and give you the credibility to be an influence over them? So that could take us back. We could we could talk not necessarily now, but later on, about communication and the difference between 
one-to-one conversation, mm. which is just like we're doing now, yeah. just as we're doing now, not like, it's as we're doing now. And public speaking, which is normally classed as one-to-many. Yes. Okay. But there is something in between one-to-one and one-to-many that a lot of people in business and out there generally find themselves in. So one to a few. Yes, absolutely. For example, in a meeting mm. where there, you know, there could be three of you or five of you or ten of you. Okay, so maybe when I when I say public speaking, I just that means to gain confidence in conversation, whether it be to one, to a few, or to many. Okay. That's good because you you can cl- see, I'm sure, that there's a difference in yes. the way you behave no, and the way you talk yes. and the way you listen. So that, that's a very fruitful area that we can explore. All right. Was that, one of, one, was that on your list? One of, it was on my list. How yes. did you write it down? To gain confidence in public speaking. Okay. All right. But that so, I've... Yeah. Confident is the key word there. Yeah, exactly. Not public speaking. Yeah. Um, I, I would I would phrase it as you want to gain confidence. We're kind of homing in now on a more precise yeah, yeah, yeah. description of what this want is. Is You want to be able to express yourself and your own thoughts and your own feelings to an audience of one or few or many. If you really want to learn from these dialogues, and the whole self-empowerment series, it helps to do exercises at the right time, just as Corbin goes up a step-by-step learning curve, so can you. So right now, try writing down Corbin's original text and the examples I give him of a better way to put into words what this particular want is. Then analyse which is a clearer way of self-expression of his want and why. After you've done that, look at your list of your own wants and maybe your needs and see if you can re-express those, write down a re-expression of those that better describes what it is you really want. Now, the reason we're doing this is behaviour change isn't like learning facts or just watching TED Talks and all the rest of that. Behaviour change requires you to go through a three-step process. You have to observe, then you have to experience or experiment, and then you need to optimise. And that is, in fact, how you have learned all your behaviour, which, by the way, is stored in your subconscious mind. Whether it's learning to focus your eyes, learning to eat, learning to walk, learning to behave in any way is achieved through observation, experimentation, and then optimizing the thought paths that go on within the neural network of your mind. We go into this in far more detail later on, but the real point for you to grasp at this stage is If you just watch something like a TED talk, you will learn absolutely nothing. You may pick up a few facts, but you will not learn how to optimize and change your behavior. And the purpose of this whole course, this whole practical course, is that what we cover will enable you to optimize your behavior and achieve far, far more of what you want to get out of life. So engage with it and definitely think of things you can read, you can watch, and you can do. There are those three classes of activity, of read, watch, do. And start putting entries into your life book as you make this progress. If you're sufficiently committed, you will make real progress. And that is the biggest payoff you can hope for from spending your time on this course. In the next part, we're going to talk about having purpose and understanding 
how opportunity is all around you. It's just that it's rare for people to actually see those opportunities. We call them bluebirds, but they are there. You do experience them flying past you every day of your life. And we want to help you see those opportunities and take advantage of them. So Carpe DM sees the day, dare to learn, dare to become one of the few people on this planet who lead a conscious life.